If you've been following along on my series on trying to get this old Mercedes V8 to run better, uh, you know I've got a challenge on my hands. As I've said many times, it could be a number of things. It could be five things, ten things. Because the car's so old, it could be something to do with the ignition, something to do with the fuel. It could be mechanical inside the engine. It could be vacuum leaks, <laughs> and on and on it goes. So I'm going through a systematic troubleshooting procedure to try to get this engine to run better. And when I got into the engine, of course, you know that I found a problem with the timing chain. The timing chain was stretched. Now, I'm sure some of you have not been around these engines might think, well, what's the big deal? The timing chain is stretched. Well, let's go back and take another look at it now. You can see it's so stretched, it was rattling around and making marks on the side of the cylinder head. It was also marking the underside of the valve cover. And if you ever pull a valve cover off on one of these engines, you want to pull it off on the driver's side over there because that's where the most evidence will be of a sloppy chain. And this one is approaching extreme danger. Now you also know that recently I went out to buy a 450 SL, a red one, you know, it was going to be the big brother of Happier, and sure enough, I found out that that engine had suffered catastrophic failure due to a snapped timing chain. So I walked away from it, and I know there are some of you who said, oh, Kit, you should have bought it. Well, there's a lot of 107 convertibles out there for sale. And you really want to bring something home that's just going to bury you in endless repair. Sure, anything can be fixed, but for that 450 SL, because of the problem with the transmission and the fact that the engine <laughs> had probably hit a few valves and they probably weren't fixed properly because it had a very bad knock in it. So I just walked away. I, I, I'm not trying to save everything here, but I'm still looking for a good R107 to add to my collection so we can begin some videos on that chassis as well. But we're looking at a W109, a 300 SEL 4.5 right here. And I want to get the engine running. And I want to get it running well before I decide whether or not I'm actually do any more work on this car, whether I'm going to restore it, or whether it will be a parts car. So that's the challenge. So what I thought I'd do right now is bring out a chain so that some of you could just see how long this thing is. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. So if I hold this thing out, the full, you know, I've got a six foot span and this is a little over six feet. So imagine what happens over time, probably due to lack of frequent oil changes or maybe as other types of engine abuse that these links start to wear. And when you multiply all those links together, you can get a considerable amount of stretch. And when it goes extreme, the chain can break, or probably what more likely will happen is the chain is stretched enough that you may lose a timing chain guide rail, and that may actually cause the chain to flip because there's so much stretch in it. So whether or not the chain breaks, or is near breaking, or whether it's so loose it could skip a few teeth in the sprocket, is, is a mute point. You need to change these chains, okay? The other thing I did was I mentioned in one of my videos, I'm just gonna kind of do one thing at a time and then I'll come back and we'll run the engine to see how much improvement was made from that particular repair. And I was doing a compression test and the plugs. I was gonna, before doing the compression check, adjust the valves. And then I thought, well, I'll come back and run the engine and you can see how much improvement just doing that particular repair would, would help this engine, if any. But, the more I looked at that chain and the more I thought about it, I said, you know, I don't want to even chance it. I don't even want to start this engine up again with the chain in the condition it is in. So I'm going to go ahead and change the chain. <laughs> this is going to be kind of fun. You know, this can be done. It is a DIY job. You don't have to take the engine all apart. And I've already written a manual on it. It's an extensive manual on how to do this job. I'm just going to share a few tips here. I'm not gonna film changing the chain since I've already written this rather lengthy manual. It took a lot of time to write. But there's a couple tips I wanna share with you. Number one, get a good, competent helper. This is someone who's been around engines and is aware of what it means to be careful, okay? You're going to need a helper. Do not try to do this job on your own. The other thing is cleanliness and protection of the engine cavities. You have to be very careful. You don't know how many emails I've received over the years where somebody 
has pulled the valve covers off and started to change a chain, whether it be a diesel engine or a gas engine, only to drop something down inside the engine. And let me tell you, that can make you weep, really weep, okay? Because that sometimes will mean you may have to pull the engine apart. And so you have to be very, very careful when working around the engine when it's opened up like that, you don't drop anything at all down in the front parts of those cavities. And the other thing you're gonna do is you're going to need to set the engine up so that you can turn it over smoothly. And I explain that in detail in my manual. You do not want to be jerking the engine like this as you're turning it over, putting the new chain in. So those are the three tips that I'm going to share with you. You know, if you have mechanical ability and you know what it means to take care and to be careful when you're doing a job like this. It's not a difficult job, but it can bite you if you're not really careful and do it with what I call mechanical finesse. So what I've done is I've put together a kit which includes the timing chain, the guide rails, the little tool I use to pull the guide rail pins, and that manual. It's all in one kit which will walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can change this chain yourself. Remember, you're talking about V8 Mercedes from about 1969 in the year market all the way up to 1991 that's right all of them over 150 to 200,000 miles better get their chain 